Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Faculty of Agriculture Inaugural Professorial Talk Series organized by the Graduate Studies and International Office in collaboration with the Department of Land Management, Faculty of Agriculture. Uh, thanks all for being here today. Uh, today, we are honored to have Prof. Dr. Shamsuddin Yusuf with us as the inaugural speaker of the series, uh, who actually did not need for the introduction, but I'll introduce him anyway. Thank you, Prof. Sham, for uh, accepting our invitation to, uh, to the first uh, talk today. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Okay, so okay. let me first introduce Prof. Sham. So Prof. Shamsuddin uh, is appointed as the Professor of Soil Science at the Department of Land Management, Faculty of Agriculture, in Putra, Malaysia, uh, since 1993 to 2015. Uh, I believe he has been serving UPM for more than 20 years or 30 years, <laughs> Prof. Sham. All right, and he did his uh, BS in Geology and Masters in Soil Science uh, and also um, okay, from the University of Malaya, Kuala Lumpur, Newcastle University, and also Gan University, Belgium. He is a registered professional geologist awarded by the Board of Geologists Malaysia since 2016. Uh, and to date, he has around 47 master and PhD students who has graduated under his supervision or co-supervision. Uh, Prosham has a lot of papers under his name and also a lot of books with his recent book, The Earth Story, Lessons from the Quran and Science. Okay. And uh, Prosham is also a fellow and the past president of the Malaysian Society of Soil Science and the past president of the East and Southeast Asia Federation of Soil Science Societies. He was elected to the membership of the Royal Academy for All Sea Sciences of Belgium in 1997. In January 2013, he was made the honorary member of the academy by the order of the Belgian Minister of Science. In April 2014, he was elected to the fellowship of the Academy of Sciences Malaysia and Prof. Shem was also conferred to the prestigious SNT Award of Science and Technology Award for 2014 by the Malaysia Tourist Science Foundation. Uh, we know that he's well-known personality among the soil fraternity, both in Malaysia and also abroad. And he was considered among the top business scientists in the country by the Academy of Science Malaysia. Um, and uh, Prosham is also awarded uh, uh, as the Johan Setia Mahkota by the Yang Dipetua Agong, Agong, the King of Malaysia. So, uh, what a very impressive uh, CV, Prosham. So, we are honoured to have a uh, you, Prosham, today, and I'm passing the floor to you. I'm going to start from the beginning. Okay. The last slide. Start from the beginning. So, this one, I don't need it. Um, anyway. Okay. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Natra. Ladies and gentlemen, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, today, I'm not going to speak about soil or agriculture, but rather on the uh, life in the university. Uh, and uh, Maybe some what I'm going to say is going to be useful to you. Otherwise, just uh, forget about it. That is me working at home. I'm not working from home. Why? Because I'm not working anymore with university. I'm now uh, uh, working as a voluntary in Amar Putra for the last two years since I retired in 2020. Today, I'm going to speak on a passage to academia. So this is the book that I have published in 2014. And most of what I'm going to say today is in this book. You can buy it, you can press. It's not expensive, but I think less than 20 ringgit. Okay. 
that's the whole begin. So I started working in UPM in 1972. So already 48 years. Then uh, within this, of course, there's some time where uh, there's a, a short break because of the contract problem. Uh, I was professor of soil science for 22 years, 1993, 2015. And then after that, I become a research scholar. So you see, I'm not a UPN alumni, but I love university just the same. People say once you pass gate one of UPM, you leave your heart in the campus. See, you can never, you can get me, get rid of me out of UPM, but you can never ever get UPM out of me. That's why I'm still here today. So let me speak a bit about job, your job and duty as an academic. See, everybody has to speak. If you're a lecturer, you have to speak. In class, for teaching and so on, but the So the one that you talk in forum and seminar and meeting, that made a difference. That made you know, people know about you. And also your papers and book and your knowledge. If you have it, you have to give, uh, give to other people, extension services and so on. Consultancy is very important. That's where you get money. You, if you have to get money, don't try to get from illegal means, such as moonlighting. That's not allowed in the university. And you can get money, extra money, where, where you get promoter. That's the way. And sabbatical leave is something you have to do. You know, that's where you meet people. You gain knowledge. And I did that in 1998. It was five months in a new university in, in Australia. And that's where I met many people. And I learned techniques that when I came back, then I used it for to supervise my PhD student. The first month was from, uh, from Mindanao, Egado. And we published four papers from that. And that technique that I learned from that. So UPM has been transformed. Because you, it's only 50 years, 1971. But it was established earlier as a school in 1931, and then the college in 1948. And then the name was changed for University of Tanya Malaysia to University of Putra Malaysia for a good reason. I will tell you after. And they said UPM has uh, no more uh, forget about the culture. That's not true. After the name change, we reorganized and we brought in four more departments. And now you see our campus here is, is big. And UPM is, uh, you know, the first university in Malaysia to be ISO certified. And look around and you must see you have everything, jogging track, Olympic size stadium, golf course, so on and so forth. We have a uh, uh, most we even have church, but cemetery. You name it, we have it. It's a good place to be in. So people say, a rose by any other name is just the same. Well, it may be true in many cases, but for UPM, it's not true. We have an image problem. I know I was in the department for eight years, and then also if continue for two years. I know. Then, we have an image problem. I was shaken, but undeterred. See, they say our culture is always hard work, low pay, and so on. Well, we cannot get students, good students, when I was in the department of deputy at that time. So once the name has been changed, then we have a sudden surge in interest. And now we have 5,000 students from overseas, from 80 countries. It is a choice university within time of 50 years. Uh, does it, it doesn't work. So. Ah, okay. Okay, sorry about that. So, you want, once you are in the UK, you want to buy a promotion. In the old days, there was no big criteria for promotion. Anybody, we don't know how they are promoted. But now, UPM has specific KPI. You have to work for it, and you have to do your work. Then you could be promoter. Very important. Okay. Well, once you are promoter, you become dean, deputy dean, whatever, 
and you have to give recommendation to people. It pains your heart not to recommend your friends. And it pains even more if you have to give recommendation to those who they don't deserve. So we have to be based on merit. This is very important. You have to work. You have to do it. Otherwise, it can be a problem like that. Yeah. All right. Promotion is just like going for, to Olympic. In Olympic, you got gold, silver, and bronze. One is not equivalent to silver. One silver is not equivalent to three bronze. No. Gold is gold. So one country that has one gold is ranked higher than those countries that have even four or five silver. So yes, so in the university, we have Q1, Q2, Q3, Q1, and we call it gold. So if you want to be a professor, professor, you have to have this Q1, gold standard. Then you don't feel inferior if you go overseas and meet people because you are the same as the same standard. You publish in the same journal that they publish in other professors in other countries. So being promoter, promotion comes with power. Great power comes with great responsibility. But remember, power tends to corrupt. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. So, but you have to make a decision. Otherwise, this is bad. No decision is bad. But we don't want to make mistake. You have to decide for promotion. The right person should be based on integrity. That's my point I'm talking about. Okay. So we want to have a dream, a dream to be a good university, not even good university, but also a great university. What great university mean? Great university mean you pass gate one or you can, your, your degree of intelligence up, is up by 5%. When you go to see professor what they are doing, then another 5%. And that great university transform people. So in order to achieve that, the professors, the student and the powers that be should work together, come together. So everybody has to do what they are supposed to do. Then we are in business. No man is an island. So even the great Einstein, he has to work with Max Planck to, to get the, you know, the theory of general relativity. And once he has that, then he has to go to pass it to his friend in Cambridge, Edinburgh, to prove it. So you need three of them to get it done. So if you, one professor write one paper, another professor write one, but if two of them work together, then they can even write three papers or they can even write a book. So that is synergy mean. The cost of research should be, you know, try to reduce it. So if they have your government, don't keep to yourself alone. That government belongs to the country or embassy. Give to them to work. If somebody come, you know, to want to approach you for work, regard them as your research collaborator, not as your competitor or whatever. In this way, we can achieve earlier. I mean, whatever you want to be a good university or a great university. Bird of the same feather. You and me and the rest, we are in the same boat. We want to get good data, we want to publish a good journal. So the key to that is to collaborate, work together. That is the way forward to get maximum productivity. In research, you have to go where the money is. So I, my research grant, I got more than 10 million. But I'm a pedologist, never get money from the very difficult. So I have to put plan. Then I got million. So once I got the money, I spent some of it to work on pedology, immunology. You know, and then my papers, most of my papers, contain that because I'm trained. I'm, I was pointed as a professor of soil science, work on mineralogy. So, and so are you. And you can run away from your work if somebody wants you know, to do certain things. They are going to you. So you have to enhance the knowledge, the fear you are pointed to. Don't run away. You cannot do that. Okay. What it takes to be a professor or a school professor? It has to be dedicated to the core, inspiring, sincere, kind, willing to share, think positive. Passion is a key attribute of a professor. Read my lead. Well, 
when I first applied the first in 1993, then I, I, I first my, I attended my Senate meeting, Tassim Nanyang was the chairman, and they were talking about how the student UPM, we don't get good students because the time SPM, so then they, when they finished, uh, most of the good one went to do HSC. But in the end, come to university, but the diploma certificate become very good. How did they do it? So it's the job of UPM lecturer. They do their work. So when they came in, charcoal, the charcoal you can turn into diamond by squeezing it high pressure, high temperature, and you polish the diamond. And that's what we did. UPM has done that. So he did that way. All right. Taking care of students is our job. Be there when they need you, guide them in their research, show them the right path to success. If they graduate, celebrate with them together. That's what they do in Europe, in America. I know, in Australia. And then, professor and student, you know, they're always together. You know? Right. Good student, poor student. I'm talking about my best student, Marcos Ander. He is from, from Indonesia. He published six papers from his thesis. When he went back to Indonesia, he worked, you know, with less uh, like, uh, uh, <clears throat> equipment. He was able to do it. And now he's still he's controlling the soil sign in Indonesia. Say so how good he is. My other student, Dian Fiantis, equally good. Then when him when, he, when she finished it, she uh, worked with me, worked with Professor in Ken, worked work with Professor in uh, Canada, and we published good papers. She went around in Indonesia, I mean, point of government, to teach lecturers how to write papers and how to get a subscribe. They asked her, where you get this thing? She said she got it from UPM. So we did it. And now she is, uh, you know, a honorary professor of Sydney. See how good she is. So if a student fail, who's supposed to blame? To me, there is no such thing as poor student, but we do have some professor who are not doing the job. I could be wrong, but that's what I think. Okay. Some years ago when I was a uh, professor, then one day I asked my student, tomorrow come see me at eight. And then after eight past 10 or so, she just not appear. Then I telephoned, where are you? She said, sorry, bro, I was on the way, but I know from the way she thought she was on the bed, still sleeping at the hostel. Okay, in Japan, this is not allowed. I mean, they don't accept it. In Japan, if professor come at eight, you have to go there before eight. If professor go back at 7 p.m., you have to go back after. But in between, the professor take care of you. They want to pass you, unless you want to pay yourself. Well, later I'll talk about Belgium. Yeah. All right. Listen to this carefully. I just make no mistake. He or she only us at law. But he does, but he doesn't have to apologize. Why? He is the king. Yeah, you go and read uh, this, you know, this uh, emperors in Rome, emperors uh, in, uh, in uh, other countries in Europe. They are like that. If the, the king arrives late, it's not his fault. Maybe we come too early. But this cannot be said to the professor. Professor, they are duty bound to, to work. And so that, why? Because they are teachers who can shape the student destiny. That is professor, our form, or it's a professor. Okay. Integrity is very important in university. Integrity is the pillar of good government, you know. So there's a hadith that says, there is a flesh in our body. If that line of flesh is good, then everything is good. Otherwise, it's in trouble. So do the right thing, even though there's no one watching you. Integrity, honesty is the best policy. So we have, we need that in the university. Okay. This is not real, but I just put it just for discussion. There was a professor, a good professor, teacher, a viva meeting for student, PhD student. Then at the end of it, he said, sorry boy, 
I cannot let you go yet because you have this problem, that problem. Maybe you have to have another examination. Then the story was said, almost to point of crime. Then she said, he said, Professor, what happened to your mercy? Well, the good professor said, I'm a professor, not the same. So that is a professor with a high degree of integrity. So PhD thesis should be based on merit. You must have minimum. Is that a problem? Then we can try to help. That's why it is. Don't jump to conclusion too soon. Well, if you get good GPA four, you say, well, of course it's good, but you got to wait 20 years from now. Even a foreign for student who can work free, do their job free, it can become even better. I mean, everybody has a poor chance to success. So, no? And we never underestimate the intelligence of students. Never say, you know, they are this and that. They have a poor chance to any success in life. Okay. In spite of all the difficulties, teaching is rewarding. You know, when you die, your line to God is cut off. Except three things, your good deed, Times your students and kids that keep praying for you, and your papers and books and report. These things, if they are using, you know, and we use it for the good of mankind, you get the dividend right along to heaven. You know? So that you know, so we rest in peace. Okay. That's a dividend I got. In the year 2000, three of my PhD students graduated on the same stage that they asked, clap. High, the loudest because one my student on the left, Dian Piantis, you are totally of her just now. And then Renato, he, he became a professor, good professor in South Mindanao. And the year 2020, he and his wife appeared at the door of my office in, in the faculty. He just came to meet, see me. And on the right, Somya Pratum Mitra. No? And then uh, he worked with rubber research in uh, Thailand. The three of them, we met three of them, 2004 in Bangkok for a, a World Congress of Science. Sci then three of them, good, Tom Yang. Very good, I like it. So that's why it is. We take care of students, the students can take care of us. So in Belgium, when you go there, so I talked to Nassar in my you go there, you meet professor. They say, ah, oh, now you have this and this. She said, because in Belgium, they have everything. They have a system, they have all this, no problem. So he said, when you finish, you can see me. So your professor is so busy. But in between, we, he had all the system for us. But when you, but of course, when you have problem, you can have to see, real problem, you, got, you can see him. By the end, when you are ready, then he will try to help you every day and night. Even you go to a park or so on while drinking and start talking about the need matter or whatever. So you will pass unless you fail or say, just like professor in, in Japan. So there's it is. Professor and student have to work together. Right. See the Malays, huh? the king and his subject is inseparable. And so are the professors and students. They have to work together. General cannot win a war alone. You must have food soldiers. See, and your university cannot progress, the research cannot progress without the collaboration of students, professors, and the farmers that be. Okay. This one, what to expect when the students are expecting. Then this one during QA Q session, you tell me what happened to your thesis. You tell me. Right. What goes up must come down. In the university, you become dean, you become TNC and so on. First, for a, for a, for a reason, for a two, three years. After that, you go back to where you belong. So, in the government service, a real government service, it's different. You finish until you retire. So, sometimes, I tough to adjust to work, to the work back to normal. I feel that when I was here department, I went to no longer hit a button, I don't know what to do, but I managed to stay on and work. So during your working time in the administration, please check the 
which side of the bread is the butter? Some people say to be to fall. Well, can be true. You see, the American giant, AIG, Lehman Brothers, collapsed, gone bankrupt, although it was built on solid foundation. So in this world, nothing is permanent. Remember this while you perform your duty as a contending in industry. The take home message is, when you are on the top floor, don't ever forget people on the ground floor. They could be your friend to depend upon when you are down and out. If you do care of them, you don't tire, if you part with them, then they see you on the street, they run away. But if you work with them, be your friend with them, with all these people, then they can see you. That's what a friend, friend is a, in need, is a friend indeed. All right, writing is my life. If you want to write, of course you want to write something that's what you want to read. If you, you want to read, there's no book written on it, you read. You write this. And Ernest Hemingway, uh, uh, Hemingway said, writing is at best lonely. This is talking about writing um, novel, but writing paper, you can work with many people. What is writing? Writing is like cocaine. Once you take it, you cannot stop. You don't believe me, you ask A, some sign. You cannot ask him to stop writing. And so it's me. I, when I write something, I, feel happy, you know, ease my pain. No. To succeed as a writer, you have to start small, but think big. You have to like what you're doing, then it becomes a passion. If you don't like it, it results in great strength. So think of that. Believe me, you don't work alone. Do it repeatedly, because practice makes perfect. If you are write a novel, you must have this in order to sell. Poignant humor and succession. That's for Ian Fleming did his novel, you know, James Bond. Always good humor. Sensation. See? Say, Boca, give him Boca. Shaken, but not stuck. See? That's the punchline. So, you want to write something? Make sure that you want to write. Okay, where and where you want to write? To me, anywhere, anytime. So one day, my, my, I sent my wife to give birth my first doctor. Take a long time. From 10 in the morning, even 12 a.m. the next day, still nothing happened. So in between, took my pen and started writing. And so was another person, Clint Eagle KL. He was waiting for his wife to give birth to the first doctor. And he was doing the writing papers while waiting for that. So even you go to Mecca, not all the time you do all the thing. But there are, there are sometimes you go to see a Kaaba, check the, the Kaaba mess of black stone, I know, basalt. Then you go buy books and find out where the stone comes from. And when you go back to uh, Malaysia, you can write something about it. So the first book that I wrote, I wrote was published by DD, DDP, Devan Basar Pustaka, in 1981. 40 years later, it was last year, and I published these two books, Acid, Suffix, Salt, and Very Salt. So, so then, the first paper that I wrote was in Pertanica, Volume 1, Number 2, in, in 1978. Then my last paper in Pertanica was in volume 40, number two, 40 years later, which is 2017. So it pays, you know, to be loyal. In the old days, people always talk about publish or perish. We talk at Copy Club, or uh, where uh, Pogati has Copy Club. Then my good friend, Eddie Tesser of Belgium, he worked with me because we are Belgian at that time. One day in the coffee club, he talking, complain here, no, no. He's working, he worked in, in the, the lab. Why we talk about conference in Malaysia? He talk about conference in Japan, conference in other countries. Why we talk about publishing in the Pernambuco? He published his work in Soil Science in America, Triple CCG. That's the, that's the best of science at that time. Tests survive under adverse conditions. 
And we, Malaysia, very fond of you. Why? Because we don't work hard enough. Or we don't have any confidence. That's the point I'm thinking about. So be confident. You don't change the world in one day. If you have to have grow crop, grow crop, water it, and slice and get up. And success. So the power study should give pat on the back, give credit to it. But if, if he or she had problem, help them, don't fire them. So this is a smart win-win situation for us all. That's how you must survive because we work together. What we want and what we need is not the same. See, you want to have four wives, prince, want to marry prince. Sometimes we get everything that we want, but nothing that what we need. Look at this. If you are the son of Bill Gates, maybe you can buy this. But maybe what we want is only this. That's enough for most of us. So, all right. When you are the established professor, you have home house. You but have a library at home because library is a hospital for the mind. That's where you work. Then you have a garden flowers and fish, when you are feel down and not up, you talk to your flowers and you find solace in it. Then you need husband or wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. Why? Because the other people, you share your success and failures. You know? If you have all that, then you have arrived as a academic, as a lecturer, as a professor. And you can live happily ever after. Right. That's my garden. Oh God, this few years ago, but yeah, three days ago, I, I, I have it, I clean up again. That's my flowers, my husband, I already stop. But, you know, I, I'm, on, I'm only an expert on water, watering. So, I'm not a expert on flower. But I always stop my flowers. But remember, if your flower I respond back, that means there's something wrong. Get to see doctor. So, I, I'm just joking. So, there is the flower, so my garden. I find solace on my flower. So, to stay in business, you have, you know, you should always say and carry it out what you have planned. If you want to write a book, go ahead, do it. It is never too late to chase a dream. We are who we choose to be. If we are in corridor of power, we are being Timalan Deka, Deka, whatever, don't lie. Don't cheat because people will know someday. A moment in time where you reach a certain milestone in your academic life, you can celebrate with a bank. Well, if you are quite to ask, professor, first thing you do, go and see the dean that you say you want to give inaugural lecture. That's the time you show what you have done. You encourage people, you, you know, see it, and then inspire them to do the work so that they also can become. If you have gone work 40 years, for example, give another public lecture and show your result. Inspire the young so that they can follow you. So that's what I did in 2012. I worked in Uganda 20, uh, 1972, 40 years. I, uh, my topic of, of the lecture was charging phenomena in mineral. I, what I've done. So uh, hopefully this inspire the young people to do it. The most defining moment in life. The greatest feeling of accomplishment, accomplishment of a parent is to see their son, daughters that he married on brother diets. You can see. Happiness for a man is to see the smiling faces of his children, grandchildren, at a gathering at home. But the most difficult thing to do for a professor or a professor is to express the parting words to colleague and student at a farewell lecture. I feel that because I was the last among the old guy that retired. 2020 was the last. Most of my friends retired before me, many years before me. So, what I did, maybe one of those days I was asked to give, you know, a short um, and a speech. 
Then at the end of it, I recited a poem. This poem is a special poem uh, by Jay Shah. Who is Jay Shah? <laughs> Farewell to Am. Just to, uh, to, to show to my friend. When the sun is up, when the light is on, the day has begun. Life is bad in business. When the light is dim, when the job is done, when the curtain is down, it is time to go home. Home is where the heart is. And you go back to your home, be your loved one, grandchildren and so on. Retirement, that's what it is. That's, that's what this means. I'm now almost going to 75 very soon. Stay at home. Although I have an office here, here uh, until further notice. Right? What do I want? A celebrated writer, a well-known soil scientist, a dedicated academic. Guess what I want? That's what I want, a caring professor. So you work with a student, be with them. The, you meet them on the street, they come and see you. But if you quarrel with them, you don't do your job, what happens? They may run away, or they, they even talk bad things about you. So be careful. What? You, as a lecturer, take care of your student so that the student will take care of you when they do it. My take home message well, this is a kind of conclusion. Take note of this advice. It is not only what we do that we held responsible, but also what we don't do. So, this is important. You are supposed to teach that to know them. So, they part the knowledge to them. You didn't do. And then you are, you are held responsible for it. So even in the day of judgment, they got me asking. So with positive attitude, you see the bright side of life. Become optimistic and expect the best to happen to you in due course. Be patient, my friend. You will be there when the time comes. So don't worry if to get, you know, do a good job and your promotion at the lead. Don't worry, you will get the dividend. Not only in this world, if not only this world, it will be in the hereafter. You will get it. Okay, thank you very much. So maybe we can have a Q&A, then I can answer. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Prof. Thanks, Prof, for such an inspiring talk. Uh, I would like now to invite if there's any question for, for, for Prof Shem. You can always unmute yourself and ask directly to Prof Shem. I notice we have uh, quite a number of participants here today from the professors, the young academics, and also students. Please don't be shy. Please, please to meet you. Just any question. If I can answer, I can ask, I answer. Otherwise, you can see me in my office and we can talk more. By the way, Prof, maybe I can start first. Okay. How do you keep yourself motivated, you know, um, you know, with your work? You know, writing books, writing papers. So, well, 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 I was young. I mean, as a lecturer. And then I don't find enough, you know, books and so on. So I say, if I can write a good thesis, surely I can write a, a book. I mean, that's what I do. But that on, when I start doing it, then I got start to writing, and I cannot get away of it. Just like taking, taking cocaine, you know. <laughs> someone say, you, are, you cannot ask him to stop writing. He's not, yeah. And so the painters, Picasso, so you cannot ask him to stop painting because once they go start. So writing is my life. I do it all the time, day and night. But don't write papers where you are driving. Ah, that's bad. You have to watch the rule. But when you stop, somewhere, take line, huh? then you can write in your brain. Of course, research, of course, you, you want to do promotion. You have to do research. Q1, goal. You have to do it. You want, you, you want to be professor. You must have a goal standard. When you go overseas, you talk to them, and they can see you, oh, well, I have seen your work. And then, then you'll be a part with them. You don't be afraid of them because you are same level. You was there wrote God. 
Q1 paper, you also have Q1 gold standard. Yes. I also uh, came across a question from uh, one of our colleagues. Okay, mm -hmm. she's a young lecturer here uh, in our faculty. She said that, you know, um, uh, when she and her students are doing experiments, they always have, you know, um, how to say, not all are positive results. Uh, <laughs> and and they, they are asking me how, how to publish <laughs> all these negative results. Yeah. I mean, the result that you want, you don't get it. Uh, but yeah. really, the negative result is the real result. Never know. Yeah. Ah, you can publish. Then you can, this, uh, I go back to you again, Einstein. He proved that Newton was wrong. Mm. So if, you, if people do research, and you know, they always uh, hope, uh, get, uh, I mean, similar to what right, uh, Newton was trying to say. But Einstein said, in his research, he found that cal make calculation, he cannot find it. So he cannot prove. He said, he said, Newton was wrong. Then he proved it. Gravity. See, negative result that doesn't mean it. it is wrong. It could be right. So you have to do it many times, and then you prove it, and you can even publish in nature with PT, 30, 30, 35 better. Do it. Negative result doesn't mean it's wrong. Okay, we have a question here from Idris Dawida. Uh, his question is that, what is the most difficult and best moment in your academic life? Most difficult was to say goodbye to my friend. Yeah, uh -huh. I say that now because you have to leave. So I am not a UPN alumnus, but I worked with UPN for 48 years. I love UPN just the same, like anybody. So when I have to leave, I feel very sad. So. Mm -hmm. The, the greatest moment in your life is to give public lecture. When uh, you a professor, when I'm a professor in 1993, uh, and then I went to see the conductor. I said, I want to give my inaugural lecture. They say, wow, I never heard people come see. I said, I was the first conductor. I want to give public lecture. So I went there and tell them. Then I pitched my date in June, in June, uh, at 1994. Then he asked another two professor to do it before me. So I was at number 10, you go to the list, eh? number 10. I could be number eight if I want to, because I was supposed to go. So just to show what, what I have, and I hope inspire the young people, you know? show them this is it. So that's what it is. You have to be brave. Don't be afraid. If you have you have a gold standard, you can go anywhere, you are gold. Don't be afraid to anybody. Talk to them. Ask questions in seminar. So we have another question from Prof. Kathy. What are you doing now, Prof. Shem? <laughs> what are you doing now, Prof. <laughs> I'm writing. I, I, of course, I have no peace. I'm writing two books with my international friend. I got problem, of course. But I'm writing a book with my daughter-in-law, teaching her to teach her to be right. But all the time doing writing, Except I don't write when I'm driving. Be careful, don't write while you're driving, concentrate on the road. <laughs> I wrote something when I went to Mecca. Told you just now. I went to check the Kaaba and say rap. I said, ah, this, this is basalt. Then I went to my wife to a bookshop nearby, near Hilton, Mecca. Then I book, I, I, I bought the book. Then I learned how this uh the stone, uh, you know. Makeup. And then I learned about this Hathatul Aswat. That is a meteorite. I learned it. I, because I was not able to go touch it because so many people, some people say you have to do this. Okay. Very difficult. Okay. But I know that rock is not from this, not from us, from somewhere in the sky. Meteorite. Another question from Prof. Katie. What are you going to do with all of your books? I'm going to give to a university library. My book. I, I got, I don't know how many, but of course I don't get much money from the press. But when I published my book, Dawan Basa, 1981, it gave me 20,000. That was good money in 1981. <laughs> so that time, Dawan Basa, 
uh, they always print 3,000 copies. And they gave me 30% based on printed copy, not based on sale. But now the Basel don't have money anymore. And I published four books with the Basel. So I wrote one book when I was waiting for my first daughter to be born in hospital. Every hour I went to ask uh, the doctor, why put? Not yet, not yet. Long time, long wait, you know. From 10, 10 a.m. the morning, 12 a.m. the next morning, nothing happened. So that time, I, what I did was I uh, got my pen and start writing. <laughs> God, the book was, was published later, few years later from there. But the fact that the time for writing is no space, and you can do any time. But while sleeping, you can sleep. But don't write where you are driving. <laughs> Prof. Shem. Yes. I mean, yes. All, all the other books, your books memang the library, but all your other books, I don't think the library wants oh. your old books. So what are you going to do with all those old, old books? Yang dah, yeah. ada, ada kulat dah pun. <laughs> well, they're very, very, you know, I, I don't know how many. 15. I have many of my books, most of my books by, by, by press. Uh, some of them, uh, because nobody buy, they throw away, they burn it, I think. Even there were Basa also, they published uh, 3,000 copies, that not all sold. And I went to buy myself, a few hundred, sell to the student. I, I, I don't know. But, but now, uh, I also give uh, my book, uh, Library and Academy Science, uh, put that, the new one give to the at least I hope one day I got a lot of book in my office of uh, collects uh, I even uh, buy books uh, and then have not opened it yet uh, book and some many of them also are my book uh, and my house I, ha I have it for uh, any books uh. so one of these days I hope I, I can donate I can give it a put in library you can I don't want to give to people because of my but a library that people can check I uh, so that but it's just that. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> congratulations for your academy. You know, uh, oh, yes, congratulations, Prof. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, any other questions from the floor? You can always unmute yourself and then uh, talk directly to Prof. Shem. And you can come to my office, we can talk longer. I have an office, I forgot your catcher, department, department, department of. Okay. Uh, okay, anyone? Okay, probably one last question from me. Uh, Prof, um, I'm now the Deputy Dean of Faculty Culture and I noticed that I rarely have time anymore to read and also write. <laughs> so if you have <laughs> anything right. from, for me? Yeah, I was head of the department for eight years. Then I was Deputy Dean uh, student. Uh, and then I was, I was, I changed, uh, they asked me to be deputy dean for research, but only for one month <laughs> after that finish. But during that time, uh, of course, uh, you know, a lot of work, but I always have time to write something. Mm -hmm. Now, one, once I stopped uh, becoming, I mean, I was no longer the deputy dean, then uh, it cost me one month to settle. I have to get my son to teach me the computer thing, because uh, that time I only knew what star. You know, what perfect, my perfect, also my three knew it, uh, writing, but I knew what start. I was one of the first in UP University, we have, we bought a PC. Because that time we got a big computer, you know, that cost 40, 25,000 each. That, uh, and that, that one is only good for, you know, uh, email. Nobody understand to use it. Everybody has that, that, uh, what, what, a son sister, you know, 25,000 each. And then, but later on when we got PC, then I start, I start doing it. But, well, I said, uh, I like to write. As I said, once you, when you go in, start writing, they're going to stop. So <laughs> you have to think of that. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, last call. If there is any other question for Prof. Shem. Before we end the session, okay. If not, can can uh, can I ask all of you to just switch on your video uh, for a while for to for us to take you know group picture together with Prof. Shem.
Yeah, this is the best part. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining the session. Thank you, uh, Prosham, for uh, you know, willing to accept our invitation. Okay, okay, are you ready? Wait, uh, okay, so smile. One, two, three. Yeah, uh, the second case, my again, wait. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Prosham. Thank you, everyone, for thank joining. Thank you, everyone. Yes, uh, and also uh, don't forget, uh, this is the first series, uh, the first inaugural talk, that, but we will have uh, another talk by other speakers, another professor uh, after this, and please stay tuned, and we will update you from time to time. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Prof. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, Prof. Zul. <laughs> yeah, Prof. Zul. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Shem. Yeah. Very inspiring. Yes, <laughs> very inspiring. <laughs> hey, the Prof. Zul, eh? Huh? <laughs> take care of your students. <laughs> and they will take care of you. Tahun depan. Tahun depan. Tahun depan. <laughs> <laughs> you believe, Prof. Okay. okay. Thanks, everyone. Okay, bye. Okay. Bye.